what's up everyone, Game Dad here. Now, a couple months back, I did an unboxing of a couple of different printers that were sent to me by Monoprice. And that was just a quick unboxing just to show you the experience of what comes in the packaging. Now, today, I am going to take a closer look at one of those printers, and that is to see what the setup process is like. Now, on my Annette ET4, that setup process was an absolute nightmare, and that's what led to me buying my Monoprice MP10. And that one, while it did have a bunch of setup to it, was much more seamless and a much more enjoyable experience. Now, after talking with the folks over at Monoprice, one of the printers that they wanted to send over was one of their more just kind of enthusiast grade ones. And this is supposed to be something that is significantly easier, uh, like just right out of the box. And that's what we're gonna check out today. This is going to be my first look at the Monoprice Voxel printer. Now, this one has a significantly smaller print bed than my MP10, uh, but overall, it still has the kind of same easy build plate material, and this one is actually fully enclosed as well. And from what I've read, it actually has some extra features in it like Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So I will definitely be checking that out, see how easy it is to get that going, and if it's a straightforward process. Now, one of the other things that this printer has is an actual enclosed area that you can put your filament into. So we have this little door on the side right here. I've already loaded up the filament that they actually send with it, but something that I immediately noticed is this filament is actually a much smaller kilogram roll. All right, so that means that in order for this door to stay closed whenever you are using filament, you have to use a smaller roll. Otherwise, you have to have something on the outside. I had already printed up some like little rollers and stuff. That way you can have big rolls sitting on the outside to feed into this. But we are going to check it out. We're gonna see how easy it is to get the filament loaded into this thing and how easy it is to, you know, just get a print file ready and just check this printer out and see how it works. But before we dive in and do the initial setup on this printer, if you are new to the channel or you just haven't yet, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons as well as that little notification bell. That way you can alert every time I've got a new video coming out. Now, let's dive in, get this thing plugged in, turned on, and see what the initial setup and leveling process is like. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing powered up for the first time. I'm gonna hit that power switch right there on the side. And as soon as you do that, the fans start whirring. And we got that little loading screen coming up right there. And apparently it has a little uh, loading chime to it. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to get this thing leveled. Now it says it has auto leveling in it. So let's go ahead and see what we can do there. We're gonna go tools and settings. And here we go, calibration. So we're gonna hit this. And I took a quick look at the manual and it seems to be pretty straightforward what you need to do. You follow the steps in the menu like I just did. And then you just take something like a sheet of paper and you go until it has a slight tug on the sheet of paper and then you know that it's leveled. Apparently you don't have to do anything with the print bed itself. And you just very quickly are able to do it. So what it's gonna do right now, it's gonna raise it all the way up to the top so it knows where the top of the Z axis is. Then it's gonna take it all the way back down and then we can do the actual leveling adjustment. Now, as it's going through its adjustments, I will say the thing is actually super quiet, like surprisingly quiet. I can hear the fan going, but it's really not anything crazy. This is definitely the quietest printer so far. And apparently that chime means that it is pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and check this. It is at a negative 0.5 right now. So we're going to see, can I get this sheet of paper to go in there? I need a smaller sheet of paper. Let's see, so we should be able to just take this right under, and right now, I cannot get the paper under that at all. So we're gonna raise this up a little bit. Still can't get under the print head. So at point two, I can do it, but it's moving pretty freely. So we're gonna try point three, and I feel just the slightest bit of tension on that, and that should be right where it needs to be. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. It has completed its calibration. We can go back 
And now what I'm gonna do is we are gonna get the filament loaded in here. Apparently there's also, you can turn the LED on and off. It has a camera function. I, I don't know what to do for the camera function. Uh, I will have to look up to see where I would plug in a camera. It does have a USB port on the front. I assumed that that was just for loading files, but it looks like maybe I can actually connect a camera to this. That way it can sit there and watch the prints. So that would be kind of cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and get the filament loaded. And then I'm also gonna see if I can get this connected to Wi-Fi to see if the software can pick it up. So from the main menu, we go ahead and hit filament and then it has a load button. So I'm just gonna take off this little side panel and I need to find the start of my filament. There it is. And you should just be able to load this straight in. Go ahead and break off that storage end. And it does have a specific way that it wants you to load it. So make sure you follow that when you're getting this loaded. But it should just be a matter of hitting load and it says, please make sure there is no filament in the tube. Then you hit OK. It's heating the extruder. And presumably it will tell me when to actually load the filament in. So it is actually heating up pretty quickly. It's going to 235 by default. Uh, that's 235 degrees Celsius. And I gotta say, it's actually warming up really fast. So that's kind of nice. And inside it does come with a generic stock Bowden tube. Uh, it looks like you can pretty easily remove it, uh, but yeah, everything is just attached and ready for you to go. It's kind of an all-in-one solution. All right, now that it has finished heating up the extruder, it is telling me to insert the filament. Now on the side, there is a very clear uh, indicator where it wants you to put the filament. So you just start to load it up and it is just pulling that filament through and wow, it actually has a super fast motor on it. It is pulling it through very quickly, which is nice. And it is just taking it right off of that spool. It's nice and enclosed in here. And I can already see it uh, going up through the Bowden tube. And we're gonna let it go through and spit a little bit of that filament out the bottom. That way uh, we make sure that it is ready to go for its first print. All right, and that filament has started spitting out of that nozzle, so we can go ahead and hit OK. That means the filament is now loaded and ready to go. I'm just gonna peel off that excess. Comes with a really cool translucent red. Now, I'm gonna go ahead uh, into the tools area. I'm gonna get this set up on my network, and we will hopefully be able to play around with that in the settings later on when I show you the software that comes with this. Now, I will say from what I have read, this actually requires a proprietary software from Monoprice in order to be able to get the type of files that this needs. It does not take just regular G-code files. I believe they are GX files that it takes. And the software, the slicing software that they give uh, is very rudimentary. I will show it to you guys later in the video, but yeah, it's not something that you can just easily load up in Kira. I do need to find uh, if there are any kind of extra profiles because this is a rebranded uh, a rebranded printer. It's not by nature a voxel printer, um, but I'll see if there are any other Kira profiles that I can get for it. But if not, no worries. I can always work in Kira and then send the file to their software to actually get it sliced. So I'm gonna get the network connected and then we are going to actually just do one of the test prints that is on this machine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just do one of the test builds that is built into this. So we go into the build menu. It does have an internal hard drive so you can load designs into there. Now it just does a 20 millimeter uh, box with PLA. That is just its test print. That way you make sure everything is good to go. Um, and I did mention this has a smaller print bed. It is a 150 by 150 by 150 bed, whereas my MP10 is a 300 by 300. Uh, so that one is way bigger than this one. But this, for a nice little enclosed machine for small prints, this is great. So we're gonna go ahead, just tap on there, and we're gonna hit the build button. And what it's gonna do is it's going to warm up the print bed and it is going to warm up the print nozzle and it will go ahead and get going. Once that is up and running, I will show you some of the build footage of it building that. And we will also go ahead and check out the software.
So as you can see, we have our nice little box that it has made right here. And then if we go ahead and push down and then pull out, we can actually remove the tray. And we have our little box that it made. It did a pretty big bed on there. And we should be able to just take this right off. Go ahead and focus that in a little bit more for you. So should be able to peel that right off. There we go, don't need that anymore. And we got a nice little 20 millimeter box. So very cool. Now something I did mention was in the settings, it talked about a camera and I didn't know if it was something external, but I was looking around online and that right there is actually a built-in camera that you can access through the software or through your phone, whatever, as long as you are connected to your network and you can actually watch your prints go live. So that is a really cool feature and I'm super impressed that they have something like that built in. This is the latest version as of recording this video and that is version 4.0.0. Now, as I said, this is a very simple slicing software. I was able to, after some tinkering, get this to actually connect to my printer wirelessly. So that's nice. The camera functionality, I haven't been able to figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I can't seem to get to the actual live stream. That way I can see the camera and see what is going on inside of the printer. But that's all right. It's not a deal breaker. It was just one of those really cool kind of functionalities that it could have. And once I do a deeper dive into the printer, then maybe I will have better luck with trying to get that to work. But with this software, it is fairly straightforward. You drag in your STL file. So here we have a Vader Puss. That is a print-in-place octopus with Darth Vader's helmet on there. Go ahead and repair that model. And then we can just kind of center this, get it in place. As you can see, it is within my border right there. And from there, I believe all we have to do is hit print. And that will go through. It will show me all of these different things right here. And since I'm connected to the printer, this will actually go ahead and just print straight to the printer as far as I can tell. But before I do that, I want to show you that I was actually able to find a Cura profile online. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that really quick. So as you can see, here we are in Cura and everything is all set up. I will go ahead and post a link to the blog that I used in order to get this set up in Cura for this Cura profile. It does have custom uh, start and end code for the G code. And one of the things is once you slice this into the G code, all you have to do is rename the file and just make it a .g file in order for the voxel printer to see it. And something else is this is actually a FlashForge Adventure 3 and that is the actual printer. It's just been rebranded by Monoprice as the Voxel. But if you are searching for any kind of things online, that will give you kind of uh, a starting point to be able to search. But in here, this works just like any other printer. You go ahead and drop your SDL file in. As you can see, there it is. I can go ahead and hit slice and it will go ahead and slice that STL file into a G-code file. It says right here, this is gonna be about a four hour print. It's gonna use 20 grams or 6.3 or 6.63 meters. Uh, if we hit the preview, we can go ahead and see the preview right there. This is printing with adhesion. I typically like to do that uh, for a print like this, just so I ensure that the small little bits don't get messed up. But as you can see, I can get this loaded up into Cura, no problem, and I will be able to actually use Cura, which is my main software, instead of just using the flash print software. But what I think is really cool is back over in the flash print software, and in this software, I should be able to go ahead and print this and send it straight over to the printer. So I'm going to attempt that right now by hitting print. Uh, it will print when slice is done. So I can just auto set that. Uh, it is gonna be the voxel. I do not have ABS in there. I have PLA. Um, it does not need to print any kind of supports or anything like that. I do like printing with a raft or with uh, the adhesion if you're using Kira. And we're just going to print this standard under more options. I have a few other things. None of that really matters to me right now because I just want to check this out. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it's going to pop up a window for me to actually save a .gx file. 
Um, I am just going to save that to my desktop. So I'm going to hit save and it is slicing that right here. It should give me a preview of the file before it actually sends it over to the printer. And there it is. Yeah, there is my file and it is streaming it over to the printer right now. Uh, as you can see, the status of the printer, it says busy. It shows the extruder and platform temps. That is done, and now I can actually see print progress. It shows me the temperatures it's going to set to. It shows my full print controls, all of that stuff. So I will get a little bit more uh, footage of everything getting started with this print, and then I will give you my final thoughts on this printer. So as you can see right here, this is what I sent over Wi-Fi to this printer, so it was really nice. Didn't have to do anything with any kind of flash drives or anything. It just sent it right over, and this is just live printing and working great. Now, one thing I did realize is I have not updated the firmware on this. So this is running OG firmware, and that is most likely the reason that I cannot get the little internal webcam to actually work. So I will leave a pinned comment down below, and I will let you know if updating the firmware actually made the camera work or if I was still having any kind of issues with that. But as you can see, this is going to go ahead and print me up a uh, print in place Vader Puss in a nice translucent red. So I figured that would be a nice kind of inaugural like real print outside of the little test print and I'm excited to see the finished product. So there you have it everyone. That is a kind of first look and diving into using the Monoprice Voxel. And if you're looking for this online, it's also known as the Flash Forge Adventurer 3. They are one in the same. I think the Adventurer 3 actually comes in white though. And Monoprice rebranded it to be a black printer instead. Now, my initial thoughts are, this thing is like stupid easy to get going. It is very straightforward, super easy to get it connected to the Wi-Fi. I did have a couple of little buggy issues when I was trying to get it to actually connect via this flash print software. And it kept giving me an error saying that it was occupied, but I rebooted my computer and then it connected right up. So I have no idea what that was about, but I haven't had that issue again since. So it just connects right up and as you saw, it just goes straight from the software right into this. I can still use a flash drive if I want, but I don't have to. I don't have to use any kind of memory cards. So, I mean, you can get it plugged in directly with an Ethernet cable, or you can just connect it to your Wi-Fi and use it that way. Now, I was very excited to find the guide from Andy, which I will have in the description down below. That way, if you are interested in checking it out, because I prefer to use Kira. It's just a much more full-featured software. Just remember that anytime if you are creating your G-code files in there, you just have to drop the word code off of that uh, dot extension in there. That way the printer can actually see it. Now through Kira, I do not believe that there is a way to do the wireless connect. So you would have to transfer with a flash drive doing it that way. But it's really, I mean, it's not that big a deal for me anyways. It, I mean, I have flash drives all over the place and the other two printers that I actively use, my Annette ET4 and my Monoprice MP10, those ones have memory cards. So I don't have like an Octoprint or anything like that set up with any of those. Eventually I might, but for now, I mean, it's just super simple and straightforward. I can just plug it into my computer, load up my files, plug it into the device, and I can just let them do their thing. So if you are looking for an enthusiast grade uh, printer, this one does have a bit more of a price tag to it. Uh, at the time of filming this video, it is $429.99, so $430 US. Uh, I don't know if they will be having any kind of sales or anything like that on it, but honestly, for the ease of use and the fact that you really don't have to do much of anything to get this going, I mean, when they say it's an auto leveling bed, yeah, it's auto leveling. All I had to do was just adjust the Z height of the extruder uh, by 0.2, I believe. It set it at negative 0.5, and I just did the paper test on it and ended up setting it at negative uh, 0.3, and it's been working great. So now another thing is, this is hands down the quietest of all my printers now. I don't know if you can hear it, but this entire time I've been talking, it's running and actively printing right here. And 
it's so quiet. So that is really cool and that's a big deal for me, especially if I have other things going on. I don't wanna hear a noisy printer in the background. And my other couple of printers definitely have some noise to them. The MP10 isn't that bad, but the Annette can be quite loud whenever it's really like going to town on something. Honestly, if I were to have a negative with this printer at all, it would be two things. One, it's got a fairly small print bed to go along with the cost of it. I would have preferred if they had something more along the lines of maybe a 200 cubed area or maybe a 220. That would have been a little bit more justifiable for the cost of this, but it's not a deal breaker for me at the 150 cubed. Now, the other thing that is kind of annoying is I tend to buy bigger rolls of filament, and if you start getting into 3D printing, you are definitely gonna be buying bigger rolls, and you can't have this completely fully enclosed if you have one of those bigger rolls because it will not fit in the side and be able to close a little filament door. So, just something to keep in mind. Again, they aren't deal breakers. It's just something to be aware of if you are getting this printer. Now, out of my printers so far, is this one my favorite? No, I still really like my MP10 just because it has such a massive print bed and it's super easy to use. It did come with assembly and stuff like that. As far as an ease of use printer, the Voxel, all the way. This thing is awesome. It was very quick to unbox, as you saw in a video that I did a while back, and it was very quick to set up. I was up and running with this thing in less than five minutes and doing its first test print. Now, I did mention at the start of the video that this was sent to me by Monoprice, uh, but they are in no way paying for the video or a sponsorship of the channel or anything like that. Uh, they just sent this over because they like my review of the MP10 and they wanted to know my thoughts on the Voxel, so these are my thoughts. Now, they did send over another printer and that is the Mini Select. This is a resin printer. Now, I have never done anything with resin printers, so I'm really excited to see what all goes into using one of these. All I've heard is that these are basically like the HD version of 3D prints, so I'm really excited to check that out, and there will be a video on this in the future. But in the interim, huge thank you to Monoprice for sending these printers over, that way I can check them out. So far, I have been loving the Monoprice printer products and they have been working fantastic. Um, and I am really excited to have the Voxel in my fleet of 3D printers now. Now, I would love to know down in the comments below, do you have this printer? Do you have any plans to get it? Maybe you have the non-Monoprice one, which is the Flashforge Adventure 3. Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell. That way you can alert every time I've got a new video coming out. Also, if you like what I do here and you're interested in helping to support the channel each and every month, then head on over to patreon.com slash gamedadshow, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access, including other benefits like getting your name in the end credits of every single one of my videos, like the folks that you see above right now. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you later.